Greetings, fellow kinsmen. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 6, Jesus commanded his disciples to go not but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And following my Lord and Savior's command, I bring today this message to you. I was working on an exposition of Deuteronomy 28. And I mentioned in the title of the last video, Four Prophecies, One Book. Well, now I'm just going to en encapsulate those prophecies and Lord willing, just finish off the chapter. And uh, I, really, I really hope it blesses you today. Okay, so in Deuteronomy 28, turn with me into verse... 68 and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen and no man shall buy you now that prophecy was fulfilled at the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans in AD 70. Okay, now, off, off the, you know, go mark of that one, it sounds confusing. What are they talking about Egypt, you know? Well, let's go and see what and uh, how that comes about. All right, so we'll... Okay, so we'll go to Revelation verse 11 and have a look at verse 8. Now, they're talking about the two witnesses here. And one shall find what else they are talking about. Okay, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Well, we know where he was crucified. In Jerusalem. And, you know, they're talking about Jerusalem spiritually it's called Sodom and Egypt and it also as it as it speaks in Deuteronomy 28 uh, when in verse 68 the opening sentences and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again so it, it speaks of Israel being brought into bondage again and we were and there it is the explanation. I hope you understand that. Um, you know, it's uh, it's just good to know. I mean, sometimes things are referred to euphemistically, and I, I don't think you can get a better example than that of euphemistically and physically at the same time. Now, to go into the second fulfillment of prophecy this would be the dual aspect of it I told you last time in the last video I believe but anyways I shall mention it here again this gentleman here um, which I'm featuring in uh, your window of course Alexander Solzhenitsyn great author uh, author of the of the books uh, the Gulag Archipelago and 200 years together um, He'd been in a few camps. He'd suffered under the horrors of a Bolshevik government, uh, which also was a crossover between this wonderful period called the Holodomor, wherein mass starvation and cannibalism, I mean, the, the, the worst of conditions, which are, were, which are even being predicted again. I would read that. That's a... That's a 
a strong second witness to a second prophecy being fulfilled in modern times. And then, of course, verse 61 of Deuteronomy 28, where we have this unique line. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in, this, in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. In my last video, I, I spoke about some of the things that weren't written in this book, and there's many more. I mean, I just did a short list. I pray you heed these warnings, fellow kinsmen of Israel. You are the white Western Europeans. You are the Israelites that were in the northern bondage, the Assyrian bondage who went north into Europe and west into the Isles and into Europe and into the United States and even down southeast into Australia and New Zealand. And we make up the European white Western culture of today. And all these things that we see are mostly happening to our people. If you know any pastors, if you know any pastors that are preaching about this, this jabbo and support of it, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's just, here's a description for them. In Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10. This is you, pastors. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Verse 11. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough and they are shepherds that cannot understand they all look to their own way every one for his gain from his quarter that's you keeping us in the dark as well to who we are i'm setting out to perhaps start reading a little less scripture and passing it off to you um, fellow Israelites because you need to study to shew thyself approved as in 2 Timothy 2.15 uh, our purpose here is to teach you to teach a brother made uh, mention of that as a reminder uh, the other day in one of his videos and, uh, and I am reminded I'm reminded of Paul's command that he's speaking to you as well if you're fellow Israelites Study to shoe thyself uh, approved. A worker that needeth not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. This is what you should be. To teach somebody to teach. You know, a young kid, if he, even if he starts learning and, he's, and he starts growing, he can teach the child that knows a little less than him. I mean, we're all children. God's no respecter of person, so you're not way up here and somebody's way down here. Contrary to some pastor's beliefs. Anyways, I shall carry on with the finishing of Deuteronomy 28 now. So, I, you know, the first prophecy fulfilled in Jerusalem, the destruction of Jerusalem. Second prophecy fulfilled with the Holodomor. There's no question. Third prophecy. What's happening now? The murder machine rollout. They're coming for our children. Yeah. They are. They've started. They started. And in, instead of in factories where we were lined up to manufacture bullets... Well, there's a rollout to manufacture something else and gets what, gets what's being used. 
Any of you pastors calling for, for us to stand up and line up for this? I wouldn't want to be you come judgment day. I scarcely want to be there myself because if the, scarce, the righteous scarcely make it into the kingdom, where shall the sinner appear? Okay. I'll start where I left off. Verse 62. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass, verse 63, that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, we were, at 1900, 30% of this world's population, those of the white Western European races. You know what we are today? And that was even after the Napoleonic Wars and the French Revolution, so-called French Revolution. We were 30%. Now we are roughly 8%. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught and ye shall be plucked off the land whither thou goest to possess it and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other and there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone and among these nations shalt thou find no ease neither shalt the sole of thy foot have rest but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind 66 and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee and thou shalt fear day and night and shall shalt have none assurance of thy life in the morning thou shalt say would god it were even or would to god it was evening and at evening thou shalt say would god it were morning for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. I'll leave it there, for I have already read the prophecy that happened to Jerusalem in 70 AD. And now what we have today You know, these pastors have gone a long way to uh, bring us to where we are. Remember what I said about giving you a scripture to read so you can store that as a treasure and learning and use it to teach others well, turn to Psalm 83 and read that all that time ago. Uh, the people who gathered, uh, they were confederate. They were confederate together. Well, they are confederate more recently. And even right now. Have a read of Psalm 83. 
and look at what they did and look at what they continue to do. And then another one I would like you to read is Jeremiah 23. That's a good chapter to, uh, chapter to read. It really is. And here is one that I will read. So you've got you've got the the scriptures bless you and you're reading them and and uh, knowledge of them. Okay. And here is the main mistake that was made by the um, the early church. I mean, obviously they started off on the right foot. I mean, they had God in the flesh there on the earth with them at the time. And still yet they made mistakes because we're not perfect. But uh, I'll take, it, take us into how they were at the time. And this is what we have to get back to. We're going to look for Ephesians, which I'm obviously, as you can hear, the rifling of my page is doing. Um, okay, chapter four. Here's what the original Ecclesia, the body of Christ, the church, was like then. And with few exceptions of schisms, there were the Nicolaitans, there were the Gnostics, there were even people that tried to pay for the power of the Holy Spirit to do healing. I mean, all kinds. Not all of whom are mentioned in Scripture, but a good few of them are. And, before I carry on, how about this, okay? The Protestants, the Baptists, the Catholics, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Pentecostals, the Evangelicals, the Anglicans, the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, and so on. All these modern schisms were all atomized. They all believe they're the way. The Catholic Church is the way. This is the way. The... No, it's not. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. What else, what else does it say here? Chapter 4, verse 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. What church follows that doctrine today? Not one of them speaking of one. And that's why we have been atomized, split, instead of going for the pure word, unadulterated word of our God, the Father, God of Israel, and his Son, the God in the flesh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That's why we're in such trouble today, because we're horribly divided and we have sinned. We have sinned. And I pray for you, my Israelite kinsmen, and for all of us that are that are serving God right now, I pray that more come to serve and to repent. <laughs>